Hey everyone. So if you can't uh, bear the thought of uh, looking at a website uh, in a Linux review video for, for a few seconds, I suggest you skip forward to later in this video because the first few moments is going to be looking at a, two different websites, unfortunately. Uh, it gives additional context. So you have to know in my search for strange Linux distros, uh, when I came across a distro with an image of a penguin surfing a wave with a crown and the Statue of Liberty in the background, I'm sure as heck going to try that distribution out. Because who doesn't want to try out a pe penguin surfing loving Linux distribution? So I came across Extant OS and Extant OS looking at the website is untroublesome and it's fast and so far just looking at the basic website uh, one of their more previous releases it's KD Plasma, Android, based on Ubuntu, kernel 5.15 etc 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 which we're actually going to take a look at today but that's not the exciting bit so Lots of comprehensive information on the website, even talking about Android and all these these fantastic things. I then went to the download section. And now the more Linux distributions, the merrier. I know there's always debate. Should we have so many? Does it pollute the Linux pool, etc.? But barring all of that. Just forget about that at the moment. I almost fainted. Now, I think it's fantastic if I hosted by the Swedish Linux Society. Great to see more people, more countries involved, etc. My problem, though, is this. 16 extra distributions. 16. One six. Right? Now, look here. They seem to have... A form of distribution for almost any type of flavor of Linux under the sun. Do you feel in the do you feel extant and open sushi? Well, guess what? They've got wonderful tumbleweed, right? Uh, although having looking at it, I think it uses a deep and desktop environment, and I think that's what sets it uh, apart, right? But, Cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Okay. I'm not judging. Uh, then there is Debex. Pretty cool name. Uh, but of course, it is based on Debian. I know. Who would have guessed? And uh, yeah, it uses Num41, Kelly Plasma, etc. Right? Then, of course, not uh, to feel left out, but there's this one, Xgent, which is a Gentoo Linux uh, version, which I'm not going to lie, actually looks pretty cool. Um, uh, they built it from scratch, so respect, uh, using the Gentoo way. And uh, after hard drive installation, kernel will be used. ISO file is this. I'm actually going to download that ISO file. Maybe it's an uh, easy way of installing Gentoo. Uh, but uh, don't tell anybody I said those words. Um, okay, then there is Puppy X. Yeah, not the... Who, yes, right, it's x Linux Puppy Edition. And that is built on... Uh, I've got Mate versions based on Slack 64 version and some different types of software going on there. Um, uh, a version that actually does look interesting. Uh, oh, they even have a Slackware version. Surprised. They have a Defender Linux edition, which boots into using Fedora Rawhide. It's an interesting choice. And I guess this is an image rescue OS. Um, what I'm actually also interested in seeing, and I might actually do a separate video for this, 
is I think they have a Android version as well. Uh, of course, it's an Arch-based system. For those who are going to have all the others, you might as well have another Arch system. And, uh, and X, this is what I'm really interested in. Their own special Android Live CD edition. This could be pretty cool. Um, uses Android 11 and you can install it to the disk. So I'll do a separate video on Andex um, soon. But today we are going to take a look at the main x Linux coming up uh, shortly. Okay, so looking at x OS, uh, the KDE edition, live media, let's get started. Okay, so here we have x correctly detecting VirtualBox. It's pretty cool to see. I've, I've given this district quite a lot of memory, about 11 gigs of memory. A nice little uh, wallpaper going on here. So, of course, this OS based on a Ubuntu 2204 using KDE and uh, quite uh, additional software under the hood. Or rather, it uses Kubuntu. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just taking a look around. It doesn't seem to be much software installed out of the box, but let's install this to the system and take it from there. Okay, refractor installer. Uh, grab PC is installed, but you put in bus mode. Continue. Okay. Uh, use you it. Disable smart belonging to desktop. Disable yeah. Okay, happy with these defaults. If you don't understand the option, you probably don't need it. Fair point. Let's click OK. Okay. Close. You need to at least have one partition if it's plus plus one. One for each separate partition. Run the partition now. Okay, that's on G parted. Ah, it's the old school way of installing some distros. Nice. Uh, new partition. Right, you need to do a partition table. Create a partition table. I just turn this DOS table. Create a new partition. A primary partition. GPT4. Sorry, EXT4. Add it. Yes. Apply. You know, I mean, to do this makes me really appreciate how simple Linux distributions have gotten in recent years. Okay, I'll just close it now. Choose a partition to install on. Yeah, this one. Okay. EXT4. Please close any running applications now. Here's the summary of what will be done. This is your last chance to exit before the system is installed. We will be asked about a bootloader later. Okay. XC4 home will not be a separate partition. Proceed with installation. Hmm. Geographic area US. Next. Time zone. Ah, just to Pacific Ocean, why not? Locales. Uh, uh, EN. Yeah, I've got the default one, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Next again. Oh, we're frozen. We're frozen. Okay. That's uh, pretty cool. Ooh, not cool. What if it's still going to install? Uh, okay. Ah, generic keyboard. Yeah, that's fine. English US, English US. I don't want to compose a key. 
Proceed anyway. What is this? Yes, just proceed. Okay, copying the system to the new partition. Okay, thankfully it's uh, moved forward. That felt like an eternity. Uh, copy files. Okay, so to bootloader. What? Oh, so I must hit copy files to copy grab packages to target and install the bootloader. Okay, copy files then. Uh, choose location. Master boot record. Okay. Okay, so I'm the bootloader. Hostname X and OS is fine. Uh, I'll just call it X and WM. Uh, the new user's real name. Well, we all know my name is Gosh. I'm going to be uh, sudo. Error detected to. This may not be fatal. Press continue. And that leaves me with hope. Continue. Fatal. Continue. That's really what you want to see during uh, your installation. Messages that keep telling you it's fatal. Okay. Now what? Oh, well, that's still maybe doing something in the background. Uh, the biggest, in case this OS doesn't come back up after the, after the supposed installation, is basically... The biggest addition really to it seems to be the fact that uh, they've added Android Studio to it, uh, pre-built in really, um, seems to be the big thing, and also lightweight uh, file managers added as well uh, as Dolphin. Um, I can't show you the Android Studio yet, because I believe uh, it tends to freeze on uh, virtual hardware. Which is a bit of a bummer. And I have to say, I really hope that at some point they move to uh, maybe even Calamari system installer because this way it was just complicated and took time. And again, right now, it, I don't even know if this is going to move on to the next step. So I'll give it a couple of minutes, try rebooting, and if that doesn't work, probably will end up ending the video. Okay, folks, this thing doesn't seem to be moving on. I'm just going to do a reboot. I doubt this thing's going to come back up. Okay, folks. Um, I'm going to leave it here. I, I did some research on the website. They mentioned the Canamari since I couldn't find it. What? That actually worked? No ways. No freaking way. Did this work? My god, it worked. Okay, so somehow it actually installed. And it's up and running, even with some fatal errors. But there's really not much more to show you here. Um, I mean, if we open up the Android Studio, probably going to freeze. But really, that, you know, who's this OS for? Well, I guess if you want to have easy access to Android Studio pre-installed on your uh system this would be a, the OS to use um, of course you could install this on another system but I mean hey that's basically who this seems to be for is if you want the Android studio or you know available out of the box and you want to do dev work on that hey why not uh, use this but from that I can't really see if another reason why to recommend it but if you've used it, have suggestions uh, or feedback, let me know. As always, thanks for watching and goodbye for now.